Hi boys and girls, this is Math Lesson 1.3, Formal Procedures for Rounding. You want to write that down as well as the date in your math notebook, so pause this while you take care of that, and then come back when you're ready. The math message for today. Ravi wants to know the total number of students that go to his school. The school website says about 860 students. The school newsletter says about 900 students. The principal then tells Ravi that the school has exactly 856 students. How did the website get about 860? How did the newsletter get about 900? Be prepared to explain how you know. Well, we're actually going to talk about it right now. So there's a lot of different ways to round, and we're going to explore um, a few different ones. The first one we're going to explore should feel familiar to you, um, because you should have gone over it in third grade. So we're going to talk about rounding to the tens place by using a number line. Dun, dun, dun. So if we're rounding uh, using a number line, um, that is a great tool because it's a visual representation of what we're talking about. So let's take a look at the one that I already filled out, and we'll talk through how I did what I did and see if it makes sense to you. So here you go. So there's our basic number line. And if I'm rounding to the tens place, I'm trying to figure out um, what numbers in tens would be closest to the number that I was talking about. So that 856 is the number that we were talking about originally. So if when I just look at that, if I don't know what numbers would be in the tens spot that would be close to this, I could skip count starting from 800, 800, 810, 820, 830, 850, that's pretty close, 860, that's pretty close. So I could do that, and you see that I filled in 850, 860 on our number line as those are the two that are closest. Then I'm looking to find what's the middle of those two things. And I know halfway between 0 and 10 is 5, so halfway between 850, 860 is 855. So I filled that in here. And then I just need to place that number on the number line to see which of those places is 856 closest to. So if I put 856 right here, which is where it would belong, you can see that it's on the right-hand side um, of the halfway mark, which means that if I'm rounding to the nearest 10, I'm going to round that to 860. So that is a visual way, using a number line, to help me to round a number. Rounding numbers is, an, is often something that we do in math that makes the numbers easier to work with, so we want to be comfortable. So that's one strategy that I might use for rounding numbers, and again, that one should sound somewhat familiar to you from third grade. Now let's look at using those same um, number lines, but let's try and do that to the hundreds place. So if I'm looking to round to the hundreds place, still the number that I'm using is 856, and I want to know what hundreds are closest. So 800 and 900 are the two closest hundreds to 856, so I filled those in. Then I want to know, so what's midway between? Well, I know between 0 and 150 is in between, so 850 would be the middle point between 800 and 900. And then if I place the 856 on the number line, you can see, again, it's over to the right. It's more um, closely um, placed to 900 than 800, which means if I was rounding to the hundreds using a number line, I would say 900. Of course, I would say 900 no matter what rounding method I used, but um, you can see the visual representation of it here on this number line. So... I hope that makes sense to you. Write down any questions you might have about rounding using a number line, and we can talk about those when you come to um, class. Okay, now we're going to use some other information to talk about um, two other methods of rounding, 
and we're going to now be looking at rounding to the nearest thousand. So in your student reference book on page 279, there's this cool page on lengths of roller coasters. And you know, I love roller coasters, so I thought I would use this to help us with this information. So uh, first let's look at how long is the King Da Ka roller coaster. So that's the top roller coaster listed there. And the length in feet, you can see, is 318 feet. So 318 feet is how long that it is. And I'm looking to round to the nearest thousand. So I could use the number line, but let me teach you another way that I might use. So I'm going to look at um, the digit that I'm actually looking to round first. So I know I'm saying I'm rounding to the thousands. So the three is in the thousands place right now. So then I'm going to say, okay, so I'm going to put that 3 down again, but I'm going to put all zeros beside it to take the place to be placeholders for the numbers that, um, the 118 that was there, those are all going to become zeros. And then I'm going to add a 1 to the digit that I am looking to round, so I'm going to add a 1 to the 3 so that the other number would be 4,000. So you could be putting that in your mind's eye on a number line still, right? But that's how I got that. So I'm saying 3,000 and 4,000. And then you want to ask yourself, so is the number I'm rounding closer to the lower number or the higher number? And you know that 3,118 is closer to 3,000 than 4,000. So if I'm rounding it, I'm going to say it rounds to the 3,000 because I was rounding to the thousands place. So that's another method that you might use. And I'm going to teach you one more. Um, let's see. Actually, let's look at, before I, before I do that, let's look at, um, just because you know where we live, let's look at the Millennium Force at Cedar Point. I um, think I've talked to a few of you about riding that ride and how much fun that is. Front row, hands up, love it. Okay, so that one, let's do that same concept for that one. So this one is 6,595 feet. So if you were going to go through those same steps, write down what you think would be the first step the second step, and then how would you know which one it's closer to if we're looking at the thousands place? So pause it while you write that down, and then I'll write it down and you can come back and double check. So uh, that's the position, the thousands that I'm talking about. So it would be 6,000, replacing all those numbers with zeros. The higher one, adding one to it, would be 7,000. And when I look at the number 6595 is closer to 7,000 than 6,000. It's above um, the midway point there. So 7,000 would be what I would be rounding to in the thousands place. Okay. One more method. This time we'll do some indoor water parks to help us. And this time we're going to round um, to the nearest 10,000. So uh, let's take a look at the Beijing National Aquatics Center. That's the second one down there. And that one is um, 129,000, you see. So um, the method that I want to show you now, let's see, so it's 129,000. And we're going to look at the number that we're um, going to round to. And we said it was the 10,000 spot this time. The 10,000 spot is where the 2 is. I'm going to look to the digit to the right of that, which is this one. And I'm going to say if that one is a 5 or greater, I know I'm going to round up. So when I round up, I would be adding one to the digits place that I'm looking to round. So that means I'm going to put a three where the two was. And then I'm going to replace all the rest with zeros. So that is a third method for rounding, where you look at the digit that you're, plan that you're talking about rounding, so the ten thousands column. And then you look at the number to the right of it. If it's five or greater, you round up. And by doing that, you add 1 to the place value that you're considering rounding. If it was 4 or lower, 
you would leave the number as it is and put all zeros there. So if this, for example, was instead 124,000, instead of the 129 that it is, if it was 124,000, I'm talking about this column, I'm looking at this number, it's a 4, which is less than 5, so I would leave the 2 alone and just change all of the numbers after it to zeros, and that one would be 120,000. Okay, so just for fun, let's take a look at the Kalahari Resort in Sandusky, Ohio, because I know some of you have been there. Um, so let's take a look at that, and it says that it is 173,000 square feet. Wow. Okay, that's really, really big, but I see, yes, some are bigger, but that one's pretty big. So let's do that same concept, and again, we're going to round to the 10,000s position. So pause me while you figure out, go through the steps I just went through, you give it a try, and then come back and see if you did the same thing that I did. Okay, so we're talking about the 10,000s place. That would be where the 7 is. I'm going to look at the number to the right. It's a 3, which is uh, less than 5. So I'm going to um, stay level. And we might call that rounding down. So 1, 7 stays put. The 3 becomes a 0, as do all of the other numbers. And I would round it to the 10,000th place to 170,000. I hope that you did that same work on your in your notebook. Okay, so here is the page that you're going to now go work on in your math journal, doing the same kind of work. Um, it's telling you to complete some number lines, then a little bit lower, it's letting you use a different method, whatever method you'd like, to round to the nearest 100,000. Be really careful. Read what they're asking you to do. They change with the problems. So go ahead and work on that page, and then be ready to come to group. Make sure you write down any questions you have for me. I can't wait to talk to you about rounding.